Ladies and gentlemen, actually we were waiting for one of our guests, but we are starting and uh, I would like to welcome you for the session on uh, building minimum consensus on the architecture of local government system in Pakistan in collaboration with GIZ. Uh, first of all, I would like to let, uh, introduce my guest. Uh, the chair of this panel is Mr. Mohsen Mushtaq Chandana. <clears throat> is a federal secretary for interprovincial coordination and he has been an officer of pakistan administrator service with blend of experience in government <coughs> government service as well as development sector our <coughs> for special remarks our guest is dr nafisa shah she will be joining us at 10:30 And our next chair is on the way, is uh, Mr. Anayatullah is a member of Provincial Assembly. He was, he's a former minister for local government and former minister for finance in KPK. Now I would like to introduce our speakers. Our first, our first speaker is uh, Ms. Amna Zadi. She's a research associate at STPI <clears throat> and currently working on different projects related to local government. Our uh, uh, next speaker is Mr. Reiner. Mr. Reiner, welcome. Mr. Reiner is uh, working for the last 30 years in international development cooperation, mainly with bilateral agencies. He has been doing consultancy and advisory work for the Asian Development Bank, UNDP, and Roland Berger. And our last but never the least is uh, the speaker is Dr. Amir Taj. He will be joining us online. And uh, Mr. Uh, let me introduce Mr. Amir Taj. He's a Fulbright Fellow, HEC Scholar, HEC Approved PhD Supervisor. He also worked as an Associate Professor, Coordinator MS Development Studies. His area of research is Public Policy Analysis. Before I hand over <clears throat> podium to the Chair, for formal moderation, I would like to share some housekeeping rules for online uh, viewers. Please, uh, at the end of this session, there will be one question answer session. So please uh, share your questions in chat box. And for audience who are sitting here, you can raise your hands for question and answer at the end of this session. Now, I would like to request Mr. Mohsen Chandana Saab to formally chair the session. He will be moderating also. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I am Mohsen Chandana, not Chandana, but uh, uh, anyway. So uh, I am Secretary IPC. I, I, before that, I was Special Secretary Finance. DG Nim Karachi, I've done master's in public policy from University of Chicago and I teach economics at IB and I've taught about 35, 34 courses of economics there. So I'll take this opportunity to invite our first guest, uh, Ms. Amna Zedi, who is a research associate of SDPI and currently working on different projects related to local government system. She earned her MPhil degree from Lahore School of Economics. Islamic everybody and um, thank you for having me. I fully am aware of the fact that I'm part of a much more esteemed uh, set of panelists than I deserve to be as of right now. But I would like to take this opportunity to talk about the research that STPI has done in terms of local governance. It is um, an area of research that has been of particular interest in recent uh, history uh, for all of us uh, at the organization and some of the avenues now, it's a topic that's very diverse. So within that, there are subtopics that we've looked at. Um, there's SDG localization, there's development framework, social uh, services delivery. Uh, we've worked in provinces of Punjab, KP, and um, uh, Balochistan. And we've also looked at um, the possibility of local government elections, how they've been dealt with, what are the possibilities of them having happening sometime soon. And other topics also look at sustainable livelihood within the framework of local governance. Now, what we're trying to do further is to look at what the role and mandate uh, of local governments can be and what it has been already. Now, what I mean by that is that 
each time a local government changes the roles and mandate change uh, what the role of political parties in that local government is that changes the endowment of local governments with um, human and financial resources that becomes different and we're really just trying to understand what the uh, landscape would look like uh, in the upcoming elections and after that how the local government systems would shape out to be now one of the things that predominantly comes up is the fact that um, each time there has been amendments in the local government of Pakistan, um, it has witnessed a variety of arrangements. So the 18th Amendment, of course, allows a devolution. It uh, provides constitutional protection under the uh, Article 140A. But uh, this comes with the fact that all provinces, to them, certain modalities are left to them, which is how it should be, because local governments should reflect the diverse economic, social, and political structures of each province. But with this, we've also observed there's a complete lack of a minimum consensus in terms of what the system could be or should look like. Now, in and of itself, this is not problematic because after devolution, this is supposed to happen. All provinces should have the freedom to choose uh, their local government systems and it should reflect the realities on ground. But what this, or, but our research in terms of both um, field and desk-based has pointed out the fact that there is not even any shared concepts at the level where what the regarding essential elements of local government could or should be. Now, this is can be something that should be worked on because every time there's a change of political majorities, there are significant amendments in local government acts for each province. And these acts are followed by uh, sometimes very far reaching consequences in the sense that the system gets disrupted each time the laws change, the frameworks change under which the local government officials have to operate and the system doesn't have the benefit of continuity. Now, at SDPI, what we're trying to do for the development of better LG systems in Pakistan really is to sort of first understand what is going on. So for that, we've conducted a political economy analysis of the local government landscape in Pakistan. We've uh, started off conducting desk-based reviews. We've also uh, started conducting field interviews because we first want to understand what the space looks like. And then we're hoping to create a platform where there can be dialogue on decentralization there can be dialogue on local governments and what these systems should entail but our, the idea is to make sure that a diverse range of stakeholders are part of this discussion now what we hope for these discussions to bring forth is that these stakeholders that we bring to this forum are able to discuss what their expectations from local governments are what the key differences in the functioning are, the barriers they've identified, and along with any policy or regulatory framework that they deem could facilitate a smoother local government system in Pakistan. Now, as mentioned, we've conducted a lot of research. So some things come up in the desk based review. And this, these are what we call like structural problems that are underpinning the local government system as of right now. Again, if and I'm sure you all must be aware to a certain degree. So the first one, I'm going to be very brief because we're short on time and this is something that's very well documented in the literature to begin with, is capacity and revenue generation. Now, it's kind of like a cyclical process because increased capacity of local governments can enable them to raise more of their own resources, which would in turn enable them to perform better for their own constituencies. But right now their capacities and of, of both human capacity and their resource revenue generation is very limited as of right now. This also has a lot to do with the fact that currently a lot of provincial uh, tax, collect uh, tax collection excise is being done at the provincial level and it hasn't been fully devolved to the local governance. Now, Inexplicably, it's linked with service delivery. And by that, we don't just mean that lack of finances is hindering their service delivery. We also mean that the capacity, as well as the power devolved to provincial governments as of right now, is not fully uh, simultaneous with the uh, work that they have to conduct, right? Um, with minorities, youth, and other marginalized groups, um, why this is one of the main structural problems being highlighted, because demographically, these uh, compartmentalizations of our pro uh, population are becoming more and more significant over the year. Now, as of right now, what's happening is that um, 
elected representatives do select uh, candidates from marginalized segments of society. There's a certain percentage and quota that has to be met. But the fact that they're being selected and are not coming up naturally through the process sort of sustains the patronage system that is going on. Um, then there's rules of business. And this has a lot to do with the fact that the uh, if, uh, amendments keep happening in the local government acts predominantly because each time the political majority changes. And with this, the roles of local government officials is unclear. Each time there's a new local government act, each time there's something new that has to be delivered. And because the roles are unclear, the execution of their uh, duties is also uh, dismal. And the last, I believe, uh, is fiscal lack of fiscal um, autonomy which speaks for itself because, again, revenue generation is lacking, uh, complete devolution is lacking, so the funds remain under the control of the provincial government far more than they should be at this point. Now, um, if yeah, so this slide is more to do with what we have so far found with our field research, and I would say that these are just preliminary findings right now. And like I said, we're really trying to gauge if there's any possibility to sort of establish a minimum consensus or to bring forth our different stakeholders at a point where they could possibly agree on certain aspects. So because this was a very central theme in our research, we ha had a response that um, by disruptive, disruptive 10 years of LG. So we don't just mean the fact that um, it's not being continued, but every time it is with a new set of laws, that means the framework will change and the, uh, the system will be disbanded prematurely. Now, this happens predominantly because of political and bureaucratic interference, and this needs to stop for the system to gain any continuity. Um, it was interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll link this to capacity later on because one of our respondents literally just did say, can one swim in the absence of water? If you don't let the function in the system, faulted though it might be, the system will never flourish further on. Second is accountability of elected officials. Now, um, this is something we asked because uh, a lot of literature reveals that when you talk to the bureaucracy, when you uh, delve into the other uh, appointed officials point of view, the idea of capacity keeps coming up. The argument is that the capacity of local government officials might not be as much, but the idea is that elected officials tend to be more accountable. This has come up repeatedly in both the literature and the field. And why they feel is this is because elected officials are more accountable to their community. They have to be answerable in the form that their re-election depends on the votes that they will get from these people. And they need to be more careful because actually we all need to be more careful because this came up that the idea of accountability should not just merely be reduced to um, political victimization because there is a tendency in political parties to blame the other party as soon as they're out of power or whatever is lacking in the system gets blamed on the previous government who left the space. Then there's skills and training capacity building. And with this, as I mentioned, local government officials feel that one, this is not the predominant issue. And the fact that actual evolution is not happening has more to do with the fact that the provincial governments are reluctant to uh, share fiscal and economic powers. Second, they say, yes, trainings can be helpful and should be conducted, but the best way forward would literally be to let them function in the field. There is day-to-day -day functioning in an actual system that is being executed is going to be the best teacher for these local government officials going forward. And um, so COVID-19's impact on LG. Um, I want to talk about more than just uh, what it meant in terms of how there were no local governments when the pandemic hit. But in a way, this kind of highlighted the fact um, that even the existing remnants of the structure were able to perform better. Having said that, all respondents completely agreed that if there had been a local government, the dissemination of this entire process would have been much more effective and efficient. Uh, so this policy planning and um, implementation, Hamza, please, next slide. Thank you. 
uh, with this, we were trying to gauge whether people felt that with the fundamental problem, where is that lying? Is it the planning aspect of it or is it the implementation of said plans? Now, while we had respondents completely agree that planning could be better and predominantly it would be so if it's informed by better and more accurate timely data, but mainly they feel it's the implementation that's lacking. Now, this in and of itself has a lot to do with the fact, uh, the points that we've previously discussed, the fact that the governments keep changing, the fact that capacity might be an issue, fiscal autonomy is an issue for which all of these reasons contribute to lack of proper implementation. And the one reason for this lack of implementation is listed right after, which is political reluctance at provincial level. Now, Respondents seem to think that provinces want to retain their fiscal and administrative powers, so disposal of funds remains unclear. I mean, the political economy is a ground reality you cannot uh, ignore, because a degree of centralization still exists and it stands in the way of true devolution. Like I can give you an example that even in KP, which is relatively a better off province in terms of a local government structure, uh, in a structure there uh, some decisions are still centralized at the uh, district level. Um, and the last one, yes, the last one is um, a common structure for the uh, local governments, which I said is, again, something we're trying to gauge to see even if there is a possibility of this, as opposed to imposing this on anyone. But respondents have been uh, positive in this regard, where they feel that, yes, uh, this can be done and, and should be done to a certain extent. Now, what do we mean by that extent? And examples are really necessary because I don't want to... Uh, uh, sort of curtail the room that 18th Amendment has afforded local governments. So some examples, India comes up very frequently. They have a chapter in their constitution which very clearly delineates what the local government system should look like, what the roles and responsibility of each official within that structure are. And they feel that this is really helpful when you have a clearer set of rules of business. Everybody knows what they're accountable for, what their duties are, and then they go about doing it in a much more effective manner. Another example that came up, and these are places where there can be and should be common structures, is the ease of doing business. The same business transaction could have two legal formalities in Lahore, but have five in KP. And that's just something which is economically not beneficial for the country as a whole. Um, some even proposed even a similar uh, hierarchical structure uh, for the local government, governments. Of course, provinces will have, and even their local governments would have the freedom to exercise and implement differently, but an underlying structure could be similar to a certain extent for the continued functioning of local governance. Now, having said that, I would again just remind that these are preliminary findings. This is the, these are further avenues of research that we've identified and hope to further delve into. And I wouldn't particularly with the panelists I'm with be presumptuous enough to give recommendations. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and pass it on to Hassan Saab so he could bring on the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amna. Uh, may I invite you, uh, Mr. Reiner uh, Roadwald, to deliver his remarks. Mr. Reiner is an expert in local government system and he has experience of Asia-Pacific region. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, good morning from my side. Um, thank you to SDBI to allow me to share a bit of my thinking about local government systems in Pakistan. Um, my point of departure is a very simple remark, first of all. There are huge varieties of local government systems worldwide. And in my line of work, I'm often asked, give me the best example. Give me a good, nice, let's say, arrangement for local government that will work best. And then I always have to say it doesn't exist. There is no blueprint. There is no best practice that you can take from one country to the other, and it will still deliver the same results. We have to accept that there's a variety. We have to understand the underlying, let's say, symptoms of that variety. And then we have to draw our own conclusions of how do we deal with those um, uh, varieties. And those varieties come in many different forms. It's a legal framework. It's a number, the types, the categories of local governments. It's something like the size of local governments. Some countries have a very small uh, average size of local government units. Other countries like Indonesia went for rather big sizes of half a million or even one million um, population for let's say a district uh, government. So it all depends a little bit. There are differences in terms of what is the functional load of local governments, the electoral systems, et cetera, et cetera. So 
as I said, I always then have to say, apologies, there is no best example. There is no blueprint. Um, and I think, and Amina has also mentioned it, um, a federal system allows, of course, a variety, allows for diversity of local government arrangements. My feeling in Pakistan was always a little bit more, let's say, similarity between the arrangements in the different provinces, a little bit more of a common or let's say a joint consensus of what should be, what must be there in the local government system would be useful. Because what we have seen after the 18th uh, amendment is really a divergence of the systems in the different provinces, all driven also by internal, let's say, um, considerations uh, in, in the provinces. But I think makes it difficult really to compare local governments um, uh, across the country. And also makes it maybe a little bit difficult then to say, is the stipulation of the Article 140A to devolve fiscal, political, and administrative authorities to the local government level? Is this mandate of the, of the constitution really fulfilled and delivered in the provinces? Of course, you don't have really uh, benchmarks to say yes or no. So that is where also the idea of that uh, panel came uh, about a little bit. Um, basically, um, I think if you want to construct a good local government system, you need to understand the context. I mean, political economy was mentioned already. That's of course a key consideration. I think you have to be clear about the design of uh, these reforms. So in other words, the kind of arrangements for fiscal decentralization, for political decentralization, for administrative decentralization. So you have to understand how those different dimensions and modalities of decentralization work together, but also hinder any uh, positive outcomes if they don't match, if they don't fit. So this is a little bit the kind of technical aspect as well in formulating uh, decentralization reforms. It's just not, the political imperative that goes into it. But there's a bit of, let's call it a science of decentralization that exists and that can be used by the policymakers. The last point, which is important and which is often forgotten is implementation of reforms. Because in many cases, policymakers think we have done a local government act, we have done a decentralization law, we have done our work, that's it. And then of course, it will not, let's say, bring you good results. Because what decentralization does and what local governance reform does is to initiate a huge change process for the provincial level and all the actors at the provincial level, but also at the district or let's say the level below the provinces, district, towns, municipal corporations, whatever the terminology is. And this change process needs to be managed. So there needs to be a roadmap. There needs to be an idea of what needs to be done to put a local government act into practice. Um, there needs to be a lot of capacity building, obviously, uh, we have heard that already. Um, there needs to be a proper monitoring system to see is our intended new local government system on track to achieve results, or is it just there, but it's not really doing much. So, I mean, these three elements need to, to come together. And I would like to talk a bit about uh, the design issues um, mainly, because I think that is, let's say, the core of our um, panel here. Um, when I prepared for uh, today's panel, I thought, looking at what I have seen mainly from in KP, but also in Punjab, um, not so much in the other provinces, Sindh and Baluchistan, where would I advise to have a kind of minimum consensus, kind of minimum standards, so to speak, for local governance systems, um, which might or might not then, let's say, be used in a kind of reformulated Article 148, but could also be part of a kind of political consensus between um, the, uh, the parties and the decision makers at both federal and provincial level. So one of these would definitely be define what is really the purpose and the rationality of local government. Of course, there's again, a huge range of reasons why countries, provinces engage in local governance reforms and um, push for something like decentralization. I think there needs to be an understanding about the modalities of decentralization. And again, coming back to what I call the science of decentralization, there's a kind of acceptance of what are different modalities and uh, what distinguish different modalities like devolution, delegation, deconcentration, 
the word used in Pakistan is mostly devolution. If I look at some of the um, arrangements that are likely to be part of the new local government, government act in Punjab, my feeling is the understanding of the term of devolution is not really in line with what literature and, and, and science would tell you. Um, so it needs to be clear what are we talking about. And there are certain principles which um, I like to see in the kind of overriding, overarching legal framework for local governments. Um, principles, because I think it's totally necessary for each province to reflect on what kind of local government system would fit our own context, would fit our requirements. Um, but these considerations should be guided um, uh, with, with certain principles. And that is really my, my main point that I want to to emphasize uh, today. One principle, unified administration at local uh, level. Um, I think what I mean with unified administration <clears throat> is really the ability and the legal mandate of local governments to control the human resources, to control their budgets. If I look at uh, some of the stipulations in local government acts in, in provinces, I would say that doesn't exist. Even service delivery, and I mean, I mentioned that, that earlier, I would say 89% of service delivery is still with provincial uh, officials, provincial organizations. Although in the local government act, it might appear as devolved. Why? Because most of the officials working for cities, municipal corporations, TMAs, they're provincial employees. They're not hired and fired by the local government. And I think what experience worldwide shows that if local governments really want to engage in service delivery and be held accountable for the kind of service delivery, having responsibility for those key issues, staffing, financing is a key. If local governments don't know what kind of chief officer, TMA officer, municipal officer, officer they will get, because these bodies are organized by the provincial level through those local government boards, local council boards, they will have very little relationship with these people. And these people will have very little relationships with the local governments they are serving in. So that is one key aspect where other countries also have struggled to say, okay, if you do decentralization, if you give powers and functions to the local government level, we also have to give them powers and functions about human resources and about finances. Um, it's not an easy process, um, but, I think that is one of those elements of a change management process that needs to come after you have uh, uh, passed or approved a local government. Second principle, intermunicipal cooperation. Um, there are many countries where the experience with, of local governments working together has proved and has brought good results. It's often capacity, uh, the, the argument of capacity well, was brought up already that's often the case that if people or the policy makers realize the capacity at the local level to deliver services might not be there, that takes the function back to the, to the provincial level or national level in a unitary state, which is not necessarily the, the right approach. Um, in many countries, it, services like water, solid waste management, pu public transport are organized jointly by two, three, four different local governments together under specific uh, arrangements. So that is one principle I would like to see in the constitution. The principle of local provincial cooperation, which is more like you know, getting the mindset right to, that, to understand that in a multi-level governance system, no level is totally autonomous. Local government cannot deliver without the provincial level. Provincial level cannot deliver without the local government level. The federal level cannot deliver without having provincial and local government level on board. Fourth criteria, we need to assign uh, or we need to spell out criteria principles, how certain functions should be given to the local government level. Um, there's huge variety across the provinces uh, in Pakistan. Um, municipal service seems to be the standard all over, but if it comes to social services, for instance, sales, education, etc., cetera, um, there are huge differences. And it's often not clear why certain functions have been given to the local level or why they have been kept at the higher levels of, of government. First principle, match of expenditure assignments and revenue assignments. 
no local government can, uh, can perform unless financial resources are there. And many countries or many governments, I should say, like to dump functions responsibilities on the local level, but keep the resources for themselves, creating what economists call those vertical fiscal imbalances. Um, and I think that also has happened here in, in Pakistan, but it's not the only example for that. So having that matched together would be uh, an important precondition for local governments to perform. And the last point um, I would like to highlight, um, and I mean, that would be interesting also for Nyadula to, to respond to that one, that the relationship between, let's say, the provincial policymakers and federal policymakers with policymaking at the local government level. Well, I would like to see a much stronger um, differentiation and in a way, a separation. Um, Pakistan is not the only country where, I mean, members of the assemblies have their own development funds for, I mean, infrastructure projects or other development projects in their localities. Philippines also has this kind of arrangements. My observation is always this interferes with the, let's say, the delimitation of responsibilities and mandates between the levels. Um, so for me, having a stricter separation on these issues would be um, another key principle, which of course is then highly contested also in the uh, policy areas. I think my time is running up. Um, so I would stop here. My presentation can be shared. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward for the discussion. Thank you. Uh, uh, may I now invite uh, Dr. Amir Taj from Institute of Management Sciences, IM Sciences, KP. He will be delivering his remarks uh, online. Hi, everyone. I hope I am uh, audible to each and every one of you. Can, can you please confirm? Hi. Am I audible? So can, uh, yes, anyone, uh, so can anyone please enable um, uh, screen sharing? Can you please uh, make it uh, loud? Yes, what I'm saying is can, can, can you please enable this uh, screen sharing option for me, please, so that I can, uh, you know, put on display my presentation. Okay, sir. Hamza, can you share screen? It's loud, sir. So the option that I have over here is, uh, you know, it is disabled, I, I presume. Okay. I hope the screen is visible to you. All right. Can I continue? Yes, sir. Please. All right. All right. So thank you very much. Um, I won't, you know, take a lot of time in introducing the topic for today. I'll, in fact, you know, the, one of the advantages of being the last speaker in such occasions is that you know most of the points that I wanted to discuss have already been discussed. Um, I'll quickly, you know, uh, cover up the points that haven't been discussed so far. So we all know about this post 18th amendment scenario, article 140A, whereby these provinces were mandated to formulate and administer local government reforms. Before that, uh, there were three major phases of reforms uh, and they were, you know, there was one element in all those three uh, phases of reform that was commonality as far as their structures and as far as their implementation was concerned. So they were pretty much the same for all four provinces. And as we saw after the 18th Amendment, uh, probably 2013 onwards, I've, I've worked primarily on the case of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa uh, local government reform. So we had this uh, kind of different uh, system in place. And one of the most uh, peculiar features of that was that it was the first ever uh, uh, phase of local government reforms that was introduced and then implemented by a uh, you know, ele democratically elected government in KP. Uh, so local government systems in these four provinces are different in terms of mandate that has been given to local government, the very electoral systems, this has been discussed as well. Also, we need to look at all this uh, 
uh, issue from a very broader perspective. So priorities of the political parties cannot be ignored uh, in all four provinces. Other than that, there is, uh, I won't call it discrepancy, but there is, uh, you know, there are differences as far as allocation of funds mechanism is concerned. Also, the inter-institutional and intergovernmental relationships between different levels of government and different institutions of government. So this was a bit of a background. Um, you see, the delegation of authority uh, for uh, establishing of uh, local government to the provinces, it, it conforms to the very spirit of federalism and decentralization. However, um, as we all know that the lack of minimum consensus that relates to structuring of local government system in four provinces is quite a, it's proving to be a stumbling block in the process of institutionalization of local government reforms. So commonality, this commonality of mechanisms, uh, that, that, that I presume is the biggest issue, uh, looking at it from a bird's eye view. Uh, there is commonality of mechanisms adopted by civil administration and district level bureaucracy. And of course, their respective provincial governments in four provinces. But when it comes to the diversity of local government structures in four provinces, this has resulted in a disarray. Why? Because local governments have to work in tandems with civil administration and district bureaucracy. So I'm not uh, technically speaking all in favor of a 100% complete uh, uniform system for all these provinces, but we have to consider the fact that since they work in tandems with each other, uh, there has to be some level of commonality when it comes to structuring them and then, of course, implementing them. Uh, that is uh, the point for, I would say, debate today. Uh, critical considerations in current scenario. Uh, most of these points, as I said, have been discussed, but I'll just quickly go through them. One is, of course, the legal framework. And uh, as they say, the devil lies in the detail. So the detailed modalities of the local government system matters a lot. Um, as such, you know, rules of business, the functional assignments, uh, responsibilities, and other than that, the authority uh, that has been given in letter and spirit for locally elected political representatives, that is of key concern. Um, other than that, we also have to take into account the money matters. To what extent are these local governments going to be capacitated for revenue generation? and public expenditure patterns. Other than that, um, we also have to look at the complementarity of other social accountability mechanisms, uh, particularly in case of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. So these mechanisms have to be quite synchronized with the local government systems. I'm referring to the laws such as uh, right to information and right to services. And then one of the presenters in the beginning talked about this point. It was about continuity of the local government system and its uh, legal constitutional protection. That remains, um, you know, uh, a kind of, a, you know, issue even today. So one point that is quite uh, alarming is that from citizens' point of view, they are the most important uh, stakeholder in all this uh, scenario. There's a hell lot of confusion as far as the citizens are concerned. Uh, without any exaggeration, I'm telling you that I've been a student of local government uh, reforms in Pakistan for the last 15 years. And even I have a lot of doubts about what is going to happen and what is going to be the roles and responsibilities in upcoming local government elections. So if it is not clear to me, uh, imagine a common person who is, uh, I would say these days, you know, people are completely indifferent towards this uh, election, uh, upcoming election in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. And then... Uh, this institution of local government has to be explored in terms of its uh, relationship with other uh, institutions and levels of government. I see a very clear you know, um, 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 uh, lack of willingness from the provincial governments for conducting elections and then you know, establishing local governments in, in respective districts and uh, the seals and local at the village council and neighborhood council level. Um, this is a very brief story of uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, the case of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, that is 2013 onwards. So we all know that there was this act, local government act that was passed in its original form in 2013. And then the provincial government took about a good one and a half, two years time to conduct the elections. 
elections were conducted in May. And then they waited for another couple of months and rules of business were eventually, you know, drafted and formulated. And they were, uh, you know, shared with these uh, political representatives in November 2015. Uh, after that, there have been more than 10 subsequent amendments in Local Government Act, which I presume, or, or, which I believe, in fact, that, you know, it changed the very character and the very spirit of that Local Government Act. So political, administrative, and financial autonomy, gradually it was reclaimed by the provincial government. Initially, the Local Government Act of 2013 looked very well because, you know, it, it on the face of it, at least it empowered the local representative to a very greater extent. However, later on, these uh, subsequent amendments, this was a kind of a, you know, a process of uh, redirecting the stream of power to the provincial government instead of... Uh, handing or delegating that those powers to the local government. So local councils remained, I would say, toothless by and large. Uh, then this Local Government Act of 2013, this was amended drastically through a um, major amendment in 2019. So whereby this district council was abolished, and now we're going to have elections for this, almost this two-tiered local government system. Um, one is, of course, the seal or town level, and then the other one is going to be the village council or neighborhood council. So apparently, the seal and neighborhood council and village councils have been mandated to deliver key municipal services and local development services. But the revised rules of business would actually reveal the real scenario. Uh, stakeholder interests are very important. Um, immediate and long-term interests have to be taken into account to come up with an idea for building a common consensus uh, for all uh, these uh, provinces. Uh, we have to be considerate about what is going to be the interest and what is going to be the role of federal government. Then you cannot simply deny the very much, you know, the, the importance of provincial governments in, in terms of introducing, structuring, and then implementing these reforms. Judiciary has also played a very crucial role, as we all know, it has been, Supreme Judiciary has been, you know, a kind of, uh, you know, um, relentlessly forcing provincial governments to, to, to hold elections and conduct elections. And then another arch rival of uh, uh, local governments in, in, in the past and currently as well, has always been the provincial bureaucracy. It's a very, you know, um, understandable fact. Um, this, same pie has to be shared between multiple stakeholders now. So provincial bureaucracy is the institution that is always, always, uh, you know, since it has to work always in tandem with each other. So provincial bureaucracy is considered to be one of the most important stakeholders and their congruence with local government system has, you know, it, it, it's quite important to be considered. Then we have these uh, presence of different political parties at the regional level, at the federal level, and of course, at the very local level. Their priorities, their interest in the long run and in the short run has to be uh, taken into account when we are thinking about planning or you know, formulating local government structures. And most important of all, from the civil society's perspective or the citizen's perspective, there is, as I said in the beginning, there's a, you know, um, a great deal of confusion People don't know what this this new system is going to be. What is it that this is going to you know the, the, the system is going to deliver to them? So there's a great deal of uh, you know confusion among the masses of uh, citizens, population. Minimum consensus on modalities of local government. I would say you know as a, so these these points have been discussed a couple of them, but nationwide deliberations are required between provincial ministries and local government departments. Uh, we know that complete uniformity is not possible. Uh, that's not even desired. However, provinces can at least synchronize systems and local government framework to a considerable extent. So useful forums that can be efficiently utilized for this purpose are for consensus building would be the Ministry of Law and Justice, Interprovincial Coordination Division, and Council of Common Interest. Um, I, I think we, we, we have shortage of time. So that's all from my side. I, I put these points forward for further discussion. Thank you very much.
थैंक यू डॉक्टर साहब मे ना नाउ रिक्वेस्ट मैडम नफीसा शाह टू डिलीवर हर रिमार्क्स शी हैज बी डिस्ट्रिक्ट नाजिम ऑफ वन ऑफ द लार्ज डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स ऑफ सिंध खैरपुर एंड हैज बीन एन एम एन ए एंड आई थिंक देर इज नो मोर रेलिवेंट स्पीकर देन हर टू टॉक ऑन दिस सब्जेक्ट मैडम नफीसा शाह ji uh, thank you very much uh, first of all i apologize for uh, the delay but i have gone through the presentations that uh, uh, you know were uh, sent to me so i sort of uh, and i heard the last uh, last presentation um uh, this is uh, as i say in in pakistan there are some key issues national issues uh, that are unresolved uh i call them the national questions you know so the issue of women for instance what is really the status of women where are women in pakistan that remains unresolved you know the push for just the equality for women or the basic minimum rights for women that's unresolved the issue of religion you know continues to be unresolved uh the the way the you know um uh these uh, uh outfits uh, have been uh from time to time used by the state as an extension of state policy that uh, ha- has really almost uh, uh created a dissension within within our state and society uh one of the key issues that remains unresolved in pakistan um and again a tug of war uh, between different power centers is a local government it remains an unresolved question um and if we look at its history uh you know there's there's this uh political contest between various forces so um if we uh, um first i'll go into the the constitution uh, presently post 18th amendment uh the constitution as was pointed out by uh the panelist before me um uh, 140a uh, calls for um uh, assigns the ta- the the local governance or the local governance systems or enactment of law of of local government systems to the provinces and, and the second principle the second uh, uh, and also it assigns the authority to conduct elections to election commission so there are two uh two uh, uh entities or institutions responsible for local government in pakistan as per the constitution one is the province the provinces make the enactments and the second is the election commission which ensures uh, that the elections take place and then there is a state policy uh, the principle of policy 32 number 32 which 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 says that the state should shall enable local governance and also ensure presence of workers peasants and uh, uh women in the in the local government uh, so th- this is basically the constitutional framework and i think it was pointed out earlier that uh, that perhaps the constitution itself has a very basic guideline it's not really comprehensive and it does not establish uh, local government as the third tier but it makes it subservient to the provinces um if we if anyone any outsider steps into pakistan today any comes into any city comes into any village enters from any point any road take any point in pakistan and what is visible and what is clear is the way the land is used the way the roads are laid out the way the streets are laid out the way the drains of of the state of this drains or and the water and so on and so forth i think that any person would clearly say that there's something terribly wrong with the way the local um the the local uh, ad- administration or the local way the space is organized the local power uh, power the local uh, you know uh, governance systems it it's it's clearly there visible that uh, pakistan's local governance is in a chaos uh, today it is it is visible everywhere um so uh, and that is primarily because if we look at the history of uh, local governance it seems that we have this bipolar 
bipolar arrangement, bi bipolar, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the pendulum swings from one, uh, swings from one end to the another. Uh, in Pakistan, most of Pakistan's history uh, is ruled by uh, unrepresentative uh, dictatorships. And whenever dictatorships come, they come with um, strange, often bizarre, very experimental governance systems, primarily aimed at holding on to power. So they do allow limited, uh, go, uh, li limited power, but at the local level. So whenever there have been dictatorships in the country, starting with uh, General Ayub, going on to General Zia, then to General Musharraf, we've had very experimental local government systems. And they are all very discreet and very, very different. Um, come uh, democracy and the constitutional rule, uh, then uh, obviously the federal principle is something that is, um, that comes at the, uh, at the, uh, on the surface and then the, uh, the uh, local governments become subservient to the proven provinces. Um, and so in the last, uh, 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 starting with the uh, uh, 2008, the, uh, with the restoration of the constitution, now the provinces are the ones that determine uh, or that make the enactments. So while, uh, you know, there, there have been efforts from the provinces, as was pointed out, the challenges remain. And I do sense that there is, uh, <coughs> sorry, I have a bad throat. The, <coughs> the challenges remain. One would have expected that the present regime, uh, which had a very strong angle of local governance to its manifesto, would be the first one to make local governance reforms or strengthen the local government systems. But since the past three years, almost in all provincial uh, governments, the local government system sort of it finished its tenure, the last elections were completed. But the, sadly, there was a break in almost all the provincial governments in terms of you know, consistency and taking it to the next round. We've had one round of elections, uh, each of the provinces came with uh, different models and which is a concern and which is the topic of uh, today's um, um, session. Uh, but uh, starting with Punjab, uh, where the local government system, uh, the entire system was suspended for, you know, uh, and then the Supreme Court had to intervene and then restore it. Uh, KP, again, it, the, it, it did not go to the next, uh, so the next round of uh, elections could not take place. <clears throat> Sindh also had a small gap, Balochistan had a gap. So all four provinces uh, one, uh, once uh, noted that the continuity is something that was not ensured. And now the election commission and the Supreme Court stepped in and now we're going to have another round of elections. But I think the challenge remains that in terms of effective local governance, have these new uh, structures or new systems that have been enacted by the provinces, to what extent have they delivered? And uh, one major issue remains. I also think that, uh, uh, yes, 18th Amendment is something that is very important for the way this country, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the country's origin, its narrative, its origin story, that it's a federation must remain uh, as a federation. But it's still very, very important, as was pointed out by the previous panelists, that some basic structural commonalities exist between all four provinces, uh, whether it's uh, uh, you know, the territorial jurisdictions on how you are delimiting the local governance uh, structures, say <clears throat> union, union, union council. I, I, I think that union council is one <clears throat> structure that has been very consistent to previous to even pre Pakistan local governance had the union councils and the towns and the cities and so it was delimited by the different population sets but these entities existed. So I, I think that there has to be some structural commonality, uh, some principles, uh, uh, you know, of like, what are the subjects that the local governance uh, gov governments uh, would take and wouldn't take. So um, that th th those uh, there has to be a minimum minimum uh, commonality in, in 
And I uh, th think that the KP model is extremely different from the rest, as, as was in the last, um, the last structure, the last enactments that, came play that took place. The KP model was very different from others. And now apparently Punjab is also, uh, you know, where there has been some disagreement, but I think Punjab is also following uh, the KP model. So um, what is really missing uh, in this is a national dialogue. I mean, we, ha we have forums like this where we talk about it, but in terms of leadership, uh, and it should be none other than driven by the prime minister. I think it's, it's very important that the prime minister or the federal government takes it up through the uh, ministry, uh, the interprovincial ministry, and there should be a national dialogue on the, some minimum agreed uh, principles on the local government so that there is uh, there there is political ownership um, uh, at at the top level and uh, uh, these uh, administrative financial political aspects are are agreed on uh, one thing that uh, uh, remains uh, uh, again a point of contest with, uh, in these differences is whether the local councils should be political uh, based on party uh, uh, vote or whether it should be independent votes. And there, the two provinces, Punjab and KP, had in their law that these should be apolitical uh, elections. But the Supreme Court ruled that, no, they have to be political because obviously the constitution is very clear that, uh, that, these, that, that the devolution has to be political, administrative, and fiscal. So these are the three, three points that are <clears throat> reiterated. Uh, so I'll close here. Uh, I, I, I think concluding that it is a very important, one of the main national questions remains the, lo the, the uh, local, local governance and it continues to be contested. Uh, one would have expected that after the uh, uh, restoration of democracy, there would be an emphasis on devolution, uh, but uh, I, the, the provinces have made the enactments, but in terms of, um, of uh, 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 you know, successful local government models uh, with the uh, uh, devolved powers and devolved authorities, so that our towns, our union councils, our um, you know, our cities, metropolitan areas have some uh, uh, legal discipline and a good governance. I'm I'm not sure. I mean, that is something that we must uh, debate. Uh, one of the key issues uh, that uh, is not being uh, devolved to the, uh, that uh, I think is again a point of contest between the provinces and the local councils is zoning. Uh, if any of you have gone uh, through the GT road uh, uh, today, if you travel starting from point Islamabad to point Lahore, you will uh, see the chaos that uh, the land use is going through in Pakistan. We don't know where the city starts. We don't know where the rural area starts. We don't know which is agricultural land. We don't, don't know which is a city land. It is a total and a complete chaos. Alongside the main arteries of this country, the main corridors of this country, you have these huge plazas, you have petrol pumps, you have... So, you know, zoning is something that this country, we, we really don't know what to, who's responsible. And that is today, I, I think this country is going to face a huge crisis very soon if our agricultural lands are not protected, if land use is not, you know, the built structures are everywhere. They've destroyed Islamabad. Where I sit today, the mountains are being chopped and cut. And there is absolutely, there seems to be no uh, political concern of what we are doing with our environment. So land use is in a chaos. And the primary reason of that is, and presently, if you look at what's happening in Islamabad uh, itself, the, the, the 16,000 uh, teachers and around three to 400 schools have suddenly overnight through an ordinance being play, be, uh, put placed under the mayor. Now, I mean, I uh, don't uh, uh, have an opinion whether they should be or they shouldn't be, but the way they are being done, and this is what has uh, defined Pakistan's local governance is the ad hocism, the lack of debate, the lack of consistency, um, the lack of dialogue and anybody, it's really whims and fancy. So somebody thought about it, uh, you know, one evening and the next day an ordinance came and then the entire education system was placed under the local council. So I, I thank you very much. I hope that 
you know, I've been able to point out some of the issues that are uh, uh, concerning Pakistan's local government. Thanks, madam. Uh, we will uh, further discuss it in, during Q&A. Q &A. Now I will request Mr. Inayatullah Saab. He is MPA and uh, a veteran. He was first time elected in 2002 and he has been the Minister of Local Government in KP. Uh, over to you, sir. Bismillah rahman rahim Thank you very much. My apologies to our co-panelist, uh, Mr. Rainer, for speaking in Urdu. I'll be sharing my views in uh, Urdu and don't have any PowerPoint presentation. Uh, my apologies to the pan to the organizers. I think I will repeat some things, so I will be able to do it. Because it overlapping things that overlap, so that's why मैं अगर कुछ चीजों को और रिपीट करो तो उस पे मुझे माजरत है फिर पेश की माजरत है ये जो थीम है बिल्डिंग मिनिमम कंसेंसस ऑन द आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ लोकल गवर्नमेंट सिस्टम इन पाकिस्तान इट्स वेरी क्लोज टू माय हार्ट और मैं इस पे مختلف सेमिनार्स के अंदर बोलता रहा हूं अपनी असेंबली के अंदर भी इस पे बोलता रहा हूं और क्योंकि मैं लोकल गवर्नमेंट एक्ट 2013 का एक लिहाज से आर्किटेक्ट हूं मैं उसका बनाने वाला हूं मैं उस कमिटी का चेयरमैन था जिसने वो लोकल गवर्नमेंट ड्राफ्ट किया था और हमने कोशिश की थी कि उसको आर्टिकल 140 के स्पिरिट के मुताबिक बनाएं लेकिन जिसको जब उसको ड्रास्टिकली अमेंड किया गया 2019 के अंदर तो मैंने तीन पिटीशंस जो है वो हाई कोर्ट के अंदर दायर की मैं तीन पिटीशंस के अंदर पिटीशनर रहा एक पार्लियामेंट्री लीडर्स को मैंने कन्विंस किया खैबर पख्तूनख्वा असेंबली के अंदर कि हमें जॉइंटली इस एक्ट को चैलेंज करना चाहिए और तमाम पॉलिटिकल पार्टी जिसमें पीपल्स पार्टी एएनपी मुस्लिम लीग नून जमात इस्लामी और जमीयत उल उलमा इस्लाम हम ने जॉइंटली एक पिटीशन उस एक्ट के अगेंस्ट पिशार हाई कोर्ट के अंदर जो अभी अभी रिसेंटली डिसाइड हुई दूसरा पिटीशन मेरे पार्टीज प्रोविंशियल चीफ और मेरा जॉइंट पिटीशन था मुश्ताक अहमद खान सेनेटर मुश्ताक अहमद खान और तीसरा जब इन्होंने एपिडेमिक कंट्रोल एक्ट के अंदर अमेंडमेंट किया कि लोकल गवर्नमेंट का ट्रांजिशन पीरियड जो है वो दो साल होगा उसका फॉर ऑल प्रैक्टिकल पर्पस इस मकसद ये था कि लोकल गवर्नमेंट इलेक्शन को डिले किया जाए तो उसको हमने लोग खैबर पख्तूनख्वा हाई कोर्ट के अंदर चैलेंज कर दिया मैं समझता हूं इन पॉइंट्स के ऊपर मुझसे पहले भी को पैनलिस्ट ने گفتگو की है और अपने प्रेजेंटेशंस के अंदर uh, इसकी तरफ इशारे किए हैं uh, मैं कुछ चीजों को थोड़ा एक्सप्लेन भी करूंगा स्ट्रक्चर की बात की गई तो मेरा ख्याल है कि मिनिमम स्ट्रक्चर जो है पूरी पाकिस्तान के अंदर डिफाइन uh, होना चाहिए और स्ट्रक्चर जब हम बात करते हैं तो टियर्स भी डिफाइन होने चाहिए और इसके साथ नॉमिनक्लेचर भी डिफाइन होना चाहिए डोमिनक्लेचर भी एक होना चाहिए अक्रॉस पाकिस्तान एक होना चाहिए इस तरह ना हो कि किसी जगह नाजिम हो किसी जगह मेयर हो किसी जगह चेयरमैन हो ये जो है मेरा ख्याल है पूरी पाकिस्तान के अंदर नॉमिनक्लेचर और टियर्स थ्रूट पाकिस्तान एक होने चाहिए और मैं समझता हूं कि 2001 का मॉडल है वो उसको बाय एंड लार्ज हमें फॉलो करना चाहिए 2013 के अंदर जो हम लोकल गवर्नमेंट एक्ट ले उसी एक्ट को बाय एंड लार्ज हमने फॉलो किया था यूनियन काउंसिल का यूनिट उस वक्त में हमने खत्म किया था कि जो मेजर कोलेशन पार्टनर है वो इस पे मुसर था और उसकी जगह हमने विलेज काउंसिल और नेबरहुड काउंसिल का यूनिट इंट्रोड्यूस किया था मैं समझता हूं वो भी दुरुस्त है क्योंकि वो बहुत ज्यादा निचले लेवल पे हम पावर्स को डिवॉल्व करते हैं तो उसको इंटैक्ट रखना चाहिए विलेज विलेज और नेबरहुड काउंसिल और तहसील काउंसिल और हमें सिटी डिस्ट्रिक्ट गवर्नमेंट और डिस्ट्रिक्ट गवर्नमेंट जहां सिटीज हैं वहां सिटी डिस्ट्रिक्ट गवर्नमेंट जहां बड़े सिटीज नहीं है हमें वहां डिस्ट्रिक्ट गवर्नमेंट जो है वो इंट्रोड्यूस करने चाहिए तो स्ट्रक्चर पे एक कंसेंसस होना चाहिए ये मेरी रिकमेंडेशन है अगर पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज किसी दूसरी इसके अलावा कि लेवल्स पे एग्री करते हैं नॉमिनक्लेचर पे एग्री करते हैं लेकिन कम से कम लेवल्स एक होने चाहिए अक्रॉस पाकिस्तान और नाम भी एक होने चाहिए अक्रॉस पाकिस्तान फंक्शंस पे भी मिनिमम कंसेंसस डेवलप करना चाहिए और मैं समझता हूं कि जो uh, 2001 का मॉडल था और 2013 लोकल गवर्नमेंट एक्ट का मॉडल था जिसमें हमने सोशल सर्विसेज जो थे वो डिस्ट्रिक्ट गवर्नमेंट को दिए थे म्युनिसिपल सर्विसेज हमने तहसील को दिए थे 
और जो लोकल लेवल प्लानिंग है वो हमने विलेज और नेबरहुड काउंसिल को दिया था डेथ सर्टिफिकेट्स बर्थ सर्टिफिकेट्स मैरिज सर्टिफिकेट्स उसकी रजिस्ट्रेशन ये डेटा मेंटेन करना या रिकॉर्ड मेंटेन करना ये वीसीएनसी को दिया गया था और एक लिहाज से प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सब्सिडियरिटी था कि आप इख्तियार जो है वो बॉटम से टॉप तक जाते हैं तो मेरा ख्याल है कि ये फंक्शन के हवाले से भी हमें मिनिमम चीजें वो डिफाइन करनी चाहिए आ, दूसरा जो वो है वो फाइनेंस है और रेवेन्यू है अब यहाँ प्रेजेंटेशन के अंदर भी इसकी तरफ इशारे किए गए हैं जब तक लोकल गवर्नमेंट्स जो है वो फाइनेंशियली अपने पांव पे नहीं खड़े होंगे तो मेरा ख्याल है वो सस्टेनेबल नहीं रहेंगे वो डिलीवर नहीं कर सकेंगे सर्विस डिलीवरी के लिए गुड गवर्नेंस के लिए ग्रॉस रूट डेमोक्रेसी के लिए जरूरी है कि उनको फाइनेंस फराहम किए जाए अगर फेडरल गवर्नमेंट से थ्रू नेशनल फाइनेंस कमीशन और एनएफसी एफ अवार्ड के जरिए से प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट्स को पैसे मिलते हैं तो उसका एक शेयर जो है वो फिर लोकल गवर्नमेंट्स के पास भी जाना चाहिए 2013 के लोकल गवर्नमेंट एक्ट में हमने ये मैंडेटरी कर दिया था कि प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट के डेवलपमेंट फंड का थर्टी हिस्सा जो है वो डिस्ट्रिक्ट के पास जाना चाहिए लेकिन अनफॉर्चुनेटली दो हजार के बजट के अंदर फाइनेंस uh, मिनिस्टर ने वो फाइनेंस बिल के अंदर उसमें अमेंडमेंट की और उसको 20 परसेंट कर दिया लेकिन मेरा ख्याल है कि मिनिमम ये भी डिसाइड होना चाहिए कि प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट को जो ट्रांसफर फेडरल गवर्नमेंट से होते हैं फाइनेंशियल ट्रांसफर उसका कितना हिस्सा जो है वो आ, वो डिस्ट्रिक्ट गवर्नमेंट्स को ट्रांसफर करते हैं ये बात भी एक मिनिमम एक चीज तय होनी चाहिए और फिर उनके जो अपने रेवेन्यू रेस करते हैं उनके टेक्सेशन के जो पावर्स हैं वो भी मिनिमम uh, एक्ट्स के अंदर डिफाइन होने चाहिए क्योंकि इस पर भी प्रॉब्लम्स आते हैं तीसरा इशू इस की तरफ पैनलिस्ट ने को पैनलिस्ट ने भी इशारा किया और वो कंटिन्यूटी है लोकल गवर्नमेंट का सबसे बड़ा मैं अपने को पैनलिस्ट नफीसा शाह साहब बस एग्री करता हूं कि ये इंतहाई इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन रहा है पाकिस्तान के अंदर और हमारे यहाँ मिलिट्री गवर्नमेंट जो है वो इस पर इंकरेज करते हैं लेकिन अनफॉर्चुनेटली जो पोलिटिकल गवर्नमेंट्स है वो इससे राह फरार इख्तियार करती है और मैं सच्ची बात यह है कि इसका जिम्मेदार जो है बड़ी पॉलिटिकल पार्टियों को ठहराऊंगा क्योंकि उनको अपॉर्चुनिटीज मिली है सुबहों के अंदर हुकूमतों की मरकज के अंदर हुकूमत की उनकी अपॉर्चुनिटीज मिली है लेकिन उन्होंने लोकल गवर्नमेंट से राह फरार इख्तियार की है तो इसलिए कंटिन्यूटी बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट है और कंटिन्यूटी कैसे इंश्योर होगी इसकी तरफ भी मेरे को पैनलिस्ट ने भी इशारा कर दिया कि अगर हम कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर एक चैप्टर एड करते हैं तो इस चैप्टर के नतीजे में और उसमें सारी चीजें डिफाइन करते हैं ये जितनी जो हमारे यहाँ मिनिमम कंसेंस जिन चीजों के ऊपर हो जाती है वो उस चैप्टर के अंदर ऐड किया जाता है सच्ची बात है कि जब अठारहवीं तरमीम पास हो रही थी जो उसके डिजाइनर्स थे उसके जो बनाने वाले थे आर्टिकल वन फोर्टी उन्होंने इसी जहन के साथ इंसर्ट किया था कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर हमारी पिटिशन पर बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग डिबेट हुई पिशार हाई कोर्ट के अंदर मेरा मेरे साथ वक्त कितना है वैसे ठीक है तो उसमें बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग डिस्कशन हुई उन्होंने हमसे कहा जब हम हमारा वकील अर्ग्यू कर रहा था कि वन फोर्टी ए जो है वो डिवोल्यूशन की बात कर रहा है जबकि आपने डिस्ट्रिक्ट टीयर को ओमिट किया है तो जब आप डिस्ट्रिक्ट टीयर को ओमिट करते हैं तो डिवॉल्ड ऑफिस तो डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल पे होते हैं तो ये तो आप कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के खिलाफ वर्जी कर रहे हैं तो ऑनरेबल जजेस के जो रिमार्क्स थे वो कह रहे थे कि आपकी बात इस हद तक तो दुरुस्त है कि प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट ने स्पिरट ऑफ द लॉ के खिलाफ स्पिरट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के खिलाफ वर्जी की है लेकिन आप हमें साबित करें कि उन्होंने लेटर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर खिलाफ खिलाफ वर्जी भी की है तो उस वक्त मेरे जहन में ये बात क्लिक हुई कि ये बात इस हद तक तो इनकी दुरुस्त है कि प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट स्पिरट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अगेंस्ट तो गई है लेकिन हम ये साबित नहीं कर पा रहे हैं क्योंकि डिस्ट्रिक्ट लिखा ही नहीं है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर डिवोल्यूशन लिखा है तो इसलिए लेटर ऑफ द लॉ भी क्लियर होना पाकिस्तान जैसे मुल्क के अंदर लेटर ऑफ द लॉ भी क्लियर होना चाहिए मतलब ये तो वेस्टमिंस्टर मॉडल डेमोक्रेसी को हम तो फॉलो करते हैं लेकिन इंस्पायर फॉलो नहीं करते हैं वहां तो चीजें कन्वेंशन पे चलती है हमारे यहाँ जब तक चीजें क्लैरिटी के साथ डॉक्यूमेंटेड और लिखी हुई ना हो तो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर एक चैप्टर एड करना चाहिए और उस चैप्टर को एड करने के साथ भी एक उसमें एक चीज और भी लिखनी चाहिए शायद मेरे को पैनलिस्ट ने वो बात नहीं कही है मैं कहना चाहूंगा इसकी जसारत करूंगा कि हमारे यहाँ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन को भी इंप्लीमेंट नहीं किया जाता है मतलब हम 
प्रोविंशियल राइट है उसके हवाले से मैं आपको बहुत से ऐसे आर्टिकल प्रोविजन कोर्ट कर सकता हूँ आर्टिकल फिफ्टी एट है कि जिसमें गैस के हवाले से है कि जिस सूबे के अंदर गैस पैदा होता है उस सूबे को प्रेसिडेंस हासिल है कि जब तक उसकी जरूरतें पूरी ना हो उसको इंप्लीमेंट नहीं किया जा रहा है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर है कि आप गैस और राइल गैस और आयल पे एक्साइज ड्यूटी सूबों को देंगे वो आप हमें नहीं दे रहे हैं तो इसका इन्फोर्समेंट कौन करेगा तो मेरे ख्याल में इस इस चैप्टर के अंदर हमें कोर्ट्स को एनफोर्समेंट भी देनी चाहिए कि अगर कोई गवर्नमेंट इंप्लीमेंट नहीं कर रहा है तो कोर्ट्स को उसको एनफोर्स करना चाहिए और चौथी बात मैं कहना चाहूंगा कि जो लोकल गवर्नमेंट के ऊपर इंक्रोचमेंट होती है लोकल गवर्नमेंट कमीशन के नाम से और चीफ मिनिस्टर साहब को पावर्स दी जाती है कि वो पॉलिसी डायरेक्शन इशू करेंगे फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम और अगर कोई नाजिम साहब वो पॉलिसी डायरेक्शन इंप्लीमेंट नहीं करेगा तो उस नाजिम को सस्पेंड किया जाएगा तो ये पावर्स या पंजाब के अंदर लोकल गवर्नमेंट को डिजोल्व किया गया तो ये पावर्स प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट के पास नहीं होनी चाहिए जब लोग इलेक्ट करते हैं तो मैं तो समझता हूं ये लोगों ये जो इलेक्टेड लोगों को कोर्ट्स के अंदर डिसक्वालीफाई किया जाता है ये भी लोगों ये ये भी ये जो इलेक्ट्रेट है उनके मैंडेट की तोहहीन है इसलिए किसी के पास ये पावर्स नहीं होने ये उस हाउस के पास पावर्स होनी चाहिए जो उसको इलेक्ट करती है तो मैं समझता हूं कि एनक्रोचमेंट जो है उस हवाले से भी लॉ के अंदर क्लियर कट चीजें होनी चाहिए और मिस्टर रायन प्रोबेबली उन्होंने मुझे बताया कि आप इस पर बात करिए जो प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट्स और डिस्ट्रिक्ट गवर्नमेंट्स और इसके अंदर जब एक दूसरे के डोमेन में हम एंटर होते हैं तो ये बात दुरुस्त है कि पाकिस्तान जैसे मुल्क के अंदर आप एम एन एज और एम पी एस को डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस से नहीं निकाल सकते हैं लेकिन आप कम अज कम एक लाइन ड्रा कर सकते हैं कि ये जो काम है ये एम एन ए के होंगे ये काम एम पी ए के होंगे ये अब मुझे अफसोस है कि पी टी आई की गवर्नमेंट के अंदर थोड़ी सी सियासी बात है लेकिन हमें कम करनी पड़ती है पी टी आई की हुकूमत स्लोगन पे आई थी कि हम एम्पावर्ड लोकल गवर्नमेंट लाएंगे और एम एन एज एम पी एस को फंड नहीं देंगे उन्होंने एम पी एस को तो जो उनकी ज्यादा डिपार्टमेंट सूबे के लेवल पे है तो वो तो नेचुरल है लेकिन पहले मरतबा इन्होंने सूबाई महकमों के अंदर सूबाई हुकूमतों के जरिए से बेतहाशा फंड एम एन एस को दिए हैं और बदकिस्मती सी वो विलेज काउंसिल के लेवल के स्कीमों के अंदर खर्च हो रही है तो ये चीज लाइन ड्रा करनी चाहिए ये लाइन ड्रा करनी चाहिए कि हम इंक्रोचमेंट ना करें एक दूसरे के डोमेन के अंदर एंटर ना हो और इन सारी चीजों के लिए फिर हमें और मैं एक एक दो बातें करके इस कंक्लूड करता हूं कि रूल्स ऑफ बिजनेस की मदद से वी प्ले विद दिस प्रिंसिपल लॉ रूल्स ऑफ बिजनेस के लिए बहुत कम चीजें छोड़ने चाहिए सारी चीजें प्रिंसिपल एक्ट के अंदर डिफाइन करनी चाहिए एवरी थिंग शुड बी डिफाइंड और ये भी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर लिखना चाहिए कि जो सब्सटेंशियल चीजें है डिफाइन दब्सटेंशियल थिंग्स इन दिस प्रिंसिपल एक्ट इन द प्रिंसिपल लॉ और उसको छोटी छोटी चीजें छोड़े जो छोटी छोटी चीजें हैं वो रूल ऑफ बिजनेस को छोड़ दें और आखिरी चीज जो मैं कहना चाहूंगा वो ये है कि इन सारी चीजों के लिए एक ग्रैंड नेशनल पॉलिटिकल डायलॉग होना चाहिए चाहे उसको वजी अजम लीड करे चाहे उसको कोई बड़ा पुलिटिक, बड़ी पोलिटिकल पार्टी लीड करे और आप जैसे लोग दरमियान में एस और ये, ये आप दरमियान में उसको फैसिलिटेट करे उसको कोआर्डिनेट करे तो एक ग्रैंड नेशनल डायलॉग होना चाहिए और मैं मेरा ये बिलीफ है मेरा ये अकीदा है मैं समझता हूं कि जब तक इस मुल्क के अंदर मजबूत लोकल गवर्नमेंट्स नहीं होंगे हमारी पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज को हमें डिक्टेटरशिप्स को ब्लेम नहीं करना चाहिए हमें अपने आप को ब्लेम करना चाहिए कि हम लोकल गवर्नमेंट्स को पनपने नहीं देते हैं हम उनको इनकरेज नहीं करते हम उनको प्रमोट नहीं करते हम उनसे भागते हैं हम पावर्स को डिवॉल्व नहीं करते हैं हम पावर्स के साथ चिमटे हुए हैं और ये जो इलीट कैप्चर है इस मुल्क के अंदर जो इलीट कल्चर है जो हमारे ब्यूरोक्रेटिक इलीट है पॉलिटिकल इलीट है जिस तरह से इख्तियार के साथ चिमटे हुए हैं और हम ये नहीं चाहते हैं कि जो ग्रॉस रूट पे गरीब बंदा है वो वी सी एन सी चेयरमैन बने उनको इख्तियार मिले इस माइंड से जब तक हम नहीं निकलेंगे यहाँ डेमोक्रेसी कोई फ्यूचर नहीं रहेगा ना गुड गवर्नेंस ग्रॉस रूट पे होगी ना सर्विस डिलीवरी बेहतर होगी वे दिस मैं आपका शुक्रिया अदा करता हूं थैंक यू थैंक यू नायतुल्ला साहब जस्ट टू रैप अप हमारा जो टॉपिक था इस सेशन का दैट वाज बिल्डिंग मिनिमम कंसेंसस ऑन द आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ लोकल गवर्नमेंट सिस्टम इन पाकिस्तान आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दैट ऑल दी स्पीकर्स हैव 
agreed on one thing that there should be some minimum standards which should be applicable in all the four provinces. This is one thing. Two, most of the speakers, Madam Nafisa and uh, Inayat Saab Nibi, but as Zor Deke Yabat Kahi hai, ke is peg national dialogue ki zarurat hai. Uh, Amna Zedi Saiba ne kaha ki there is uh, no shared uh, concept at this principle, which is a matter of concern. Uh, and local government should be according to the needs. And that was uh, emphasized by Mr. Reiner uh, Roadwald also. And he rightly said that there are a lot of local government systems and we should have our own tailor-made system, uh, not adopt one system and try to uh, implement it in Pakistan. Madam Nahida, Nafisa Shah has also uh, delved into the past three local government systems of 1962. Just uh, uh, probably I'll translate it later. That was basic democracy. And I remember my father told me then, like early 60s or late, uh, early seven, late 60s or early 70s, he said, this is not basic democracy. This is Baker's democracy. So Baker's means helpless. All right. So I still remember that. And uh, she discussed the, the issue of party and non-party system also and referred to the uh, Supreme Court decision. And Inayatullah Saab has... Uh, uh, there's a slight my disagreement with what the Inayatullah Shah Saab said. Initially, he said that the local government should have their own revenue collection system. But then when he elaborated it, he talked about the transfer of funds, making it mandatory. To my mind, one thing is clear. Local government systems will always be 100% dependent on the provincial governments if they will not know how to collect revenue. One. Two, I refer to very good research which says that economic growth leads to fiscal decentralization and fiscal decentralization then makes local governments independent. In the current scenario, what I see in the present uh, local government, uh, the uh, economic situation of the country, I, I, I'm sorry, I may be wrong, but I don't see uh, that happening in near future. Uh, I will uh, take just three questions because the time is up. So just three questions. Ji, please, aap shuru kijiye. Ji, please. Ji, ji, aa rahi hai. Question hai. Uh, training ki aap baat kare, the training of uh, local government representatives. Aap usko jawab dene? دیکھیں دیکھیں یہ یہ بات جو ہے میرے خیال میں کو پینلسٹ کے اندر کسی نے کہی بھی کہ ہر ملک کا الگ لوکل گورنمنٹ سسٹم ہوگا اور ایک سائز سب پہ فٹ یہ سلوشن تو پوری دنیا کے اندر نہیں ہو سکتی ہے کلچرل سینسٹیوٹی یہ ایک فیکٹ حقیقت ہے اور میرا خیال ہے کہ لاس کے اندر کچھ چیزیں تو کلیئر ہے کانسٹیٹیوشن کے اندر بھی چیزیں کلیئر ہے اور جو ہماری کلچر ہے ریلیجن ہے اس حوالے سے ہمارے کانسٹیوشن کے اندر بھی کمپلیٹ کلیئرٹی ہے تو میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ اس وقت تو پاکستان کے اندر بس خواتین ہے تو خواتین پہ کسی جاب کی تو پابندی نہیں ہے نیچرلی ہمارے کلچر کے اندر کچھ خواتین اپنے چوائس پہ مثلا ٹیچنگ کے اندر جاتی ہے نرسنگ کے اندر جاتی ہے میڈیکل پروفیشن کے اندر جاتی ہے لیکن میرا مجھے نہیں معلوم کہ کہیں کسی جگہ پہ کوئی پابندی ہے اور اس پہ کوئی مطلب قدغن لگانے کی ضرورت ہے میں نہیں سمجھتا اس پہ کوئی وہ نہیں قدغن نہیں لگایا جا سکتا جی پلیز
that is my question too <laughs> i think that is my main question and i started my uh, remarks by saying this is a national question um, just as the issue of religion and there are you know issues that this country really needs to tackle primarily i think that you need st a st strong leadership at the central level that first recognizes that this is an issue that needs to go beyond we do not want to be trapped ke bas subah ka hai to subah ke beyond baat hi nahi hogi this they, we must recognize that this is an issue of pakistan the bad governance starts from the street uh, and and uh, and hum log jaise log jo hai yakeen kare mera kaam to law making hai lekin mujhe jo subah ko pehla kaam aata aata hai wo street ka aata hai ki meri gali mein ye ho gaya aur meri gali mein wo ho gaya whether it is a local contest whether it's a drain water spilling out pani nahi hai so we just become local councillors as an mna i'm doing a local councillor's job so this I, there it must be a recognition that this is one of the 22 crore awam jo hai wo without strong local governance and uh, on an agreed a settled issue hona chahiye ye cheeze settle nahi ho pati so i think that uh, i strong uh, leadership at the central level which will bring all the stakeholders together and you just need and of course political parties are very very important which was pointed out by shah saab also you want a last question please i have a status set up at the district level one is headed by the chairman district council and the other one is headed by the deputy commissioner who represents the provincial council my question is with uh, mr rainer how many countries have such time of uh, such type of fuel system and all the time you uh, you may uh, have seen it that there uh, there is no uh, harmonious relationship between these two areas so should be a short answer to have a photograph and then we have to pr uh, present the books to the delegation members uh, panelists if you ask me how many countries i wouldn't be able to answer um but there are in all countries are uh, uh, well one example that i could mention is for instance the uh, philippines where you do have local governments elected councillors elected mayors or chairpersons of the uh, councillors and you have regional representatives of the different line ministries including the minister of interior at the district level so that is a bit the similar combination so the fact that the national or provincial administration has some representation at the let's say lower uh, levels i think that is common in most countries but the the arrangements between them i will refer to one research which say, which says that we were basically colonies so when we became independent we adopted the system given by the colonist so the new system was centralized so we have not been able to uh, shed it off and we are still following a centralized system thank you very much very nice panel uh, ek uh, i will request the panelists for a group photo and then we will present the uh, uh, the books publications and we will end the session thank you very much